Hello, hello, this is Peter. I'll be showing you around the web and especially web applications in .NET running on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, and even in containers. Okay, so in short, with .NET, you can build all kinds of apps. Uh, you can build console apps, web apps, mobile apps, machine learning, data and AI, game, IoT, drones, what have you. When you want to get started with .NET, go to this website, .net.microsoft.com. You can find all kinds of training material and you can download .NET from here. So with .NET, you have the option of a couple of versions currently in support, .NET Core 3.0, that is one of the older versions released almost two years ago. So mainstream support is about to end. Um, the new long-term support was launched last year, which is .NET 6. Um, we no longer speak about core or .NET. 20 years ago when .NET started, there was a, uh, .NET was tied to Windows. Later, .NET Core came out that had a subset of the .NET framework and that could run on cross-platform, so on Linux and, and Mac. Uh, nowadays, it's all .NET Core, you could say. So we dropped the core and it's actually .NET Core, the cross-platform option and you can run it for .NET 6 and 7. Uh, as I said, 6 is the long-term support launched last year, still two years of mainstream support remaining. The latest is .NET 7, new language features. Um, just released, that is a standard term support, which means it's 18 months. Uh, so for now, if you have to choose for an option to use in production, use .NET 6, because you get longer support. Um, and then you get .NET 7, uh, if you want to have the latest versions. So what does that look like? This is a Linux VM running in Azure, which is useful because I don't have to pay for it. I can use as much capacity as I want. Um, but most importantly, the network connection. Because if you're going to download and install stuff, and especially when working with containers, pooling and pushing images, uh, you want to have a good network connection so that you spend as little time working, waiting on those. Okay, so here the version is 2004, uh, Ubuntu 2004. Uh, and there's also .NET, .NET installed. If you type .NET, you can, for instance, say list SDKs list in case. And as you can see, I have five still installed, six, seven, and actually two sevens. One was the preview version. Uh, with .NET, you can do all kinds of things. So if you ask for the help for .NET, you'll see that you can do commands like new to get started. You can also then do a restore to store your packages. You can do a build that actually compiles and you can do a publish that packages your app for deployment to run in a production environment. For .NET new, there's also a couple of options because there's templates. Common templates are, for instance, hp.core web app or blazer or console, but there's more if you do .NET new list there's a whole list of things. In this case, I already have a web app, C, with model, views, and controllers. So I've chosen the MVC option. Um, and I can do .NET restore and build and publish all those commands. You already saw that I was doing .NET list SDKs, and I was running five versions here. So I can run this app here on Linux, but ideally I don't want to think about much about those dependencies. And that's where containers come in, right? So containers can help you package your app and your dependencies and then put it in one uh, package really, uh, the container image. 
And that's what you deploy to container host. There's all kinds of options in Azure. We'll talk about it later. Um, and so that's the, yeah, the, the easy way, the unified way to, to ship your app. Now with .NET, by default, you get this image. You're using .NET slash ASP 6 or 7, right? This is docs from the 6 version, which isn't wrong. It's just different. Uh, you can use those here. So I can say Docker pool, and I can do the 6 version. You can also do the 7 version. But as you can see, that's a pretty uh, big Pretty big, pretty big version because ASP.NET 7 and 6 are both about 200 megabytes. Now, as you can see, there's also Alpine, right? And Alpine is 104. Hmm, so how do I get that? Because that would save me half of the container image when I'm building, when I'm storing it on disk, when I'm pulling it down and pushing it back up to the registry, uh, when I'm doing deployments to an app. Okay, so that's where this repo comes in, right? So you can go to github.com slash .net slash .net dash docker. And that's where there's a whole bunch of sample Docker files that just work. As you can see, there's Alpine for ARM32, ARM64, X64, and then also others for Debian, if that's your preference, Ubuntu, and the nano server and server core for Windows. So going back to our app, going one level up, you see that I do have that Docker file here. So if I print that file out, you see that I've referenced here to the repo we're just looking at. And this is stored in my uh, GitHub repo, so you can actually find it there too. So what it does, it takes an SDK image, right? So it uses multi-stage build, as uh, Docker calls it. And the advantage there is that you use the SDK build image to actually compile the app, but you don't need all those build tools to publish the app. Um, so the leaner version, that's where eventually you copy the app, the compiled app to, and that's what you run and deploy. Uh, so in this case, I can say docker build period because this is the folder where my sources are and my docker file. Uh, and I can tag it saying demo. There we go. This goes really quickly. And the advantage here is shown, right? Because I didn't change anything since my last build. So the build process recognizes that it can still use all the cached layers that it was using as intermediate steps. Uh, so it really doesn't have to do anything new. So this is built. Um, we can do Docker images to just look at it, what it is. So I did the Pedro demo. I read that two, two hours ago and it hasn't changed, right? My sources haven't changed. So the, there's no new build image, it's just reusing the same. And I can then push that to a container registry, for instance. Uh, oh no, first look, let's look at the, the repo that I'm using. So if you want to visit this, go to github.com slash Pedebrein, my alias slash sp7. That's where you find it. I also have so in the web folder, that's the application. And I also have YAML files to deploy to Kubernetes. Uh, the Docker image, you can push to Docker Hub, right? To any container registry. And obviously Azure also has a container registry. So my ASP7 image is also here. And then you can deploy this to uh, any container hosting option like uh, container apps or Kubernetes cluster or app service. 
and you see it running. Right, so in this short video, you've seen how .NET runs on Linux, how you can build, compile, uh, create new applications. And you can run them on Linux, but you can also put them in a container and then run them on Linux with the added advantage that your dependencies are in there. And you can then push it to a container registry and reuse that same package throughout your deployments. Thanks for watching.